morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Everyday Growth Advisors live stream. It's a new ticker Monday. I hope you guys are having a great Monday over there in the Americas. Welcome, welcome. It's a great day to have a great day, guys. Um, and I think that this week's ticker, we might as well just go ahead and, uh, you know, buy it right away, right? That's what's been happening every single week, guys. We've been choosing a ticker and then it just goes to the moon. Okay, obviously, I'm just kidding, right? I don't think we can do it with this one. A couple of reasons why, but, you know, I'll get to that in a second. Let's not, um, let's not you know, uh, jump the gun or count our chickens before they whack. <laughs> uh, we'll be going to Raytheon today, which will be the ticker of the week, as chosen by you guys. So welcome in. Good morning. Hope you're having your, your bagel and your coffee ready while I'm having my milk and my Baileys <laughs> on this side of the world. I live in the future, guys. I live in the future. So it is what it is. Okay, we'll be going through the market rundown really quickly. Uh, let's see. Why did you leave Option Swing? I actually answered this question in the previous live stream. If you weren't here, here's the quick 20, 20 second lowdown. Um, essentially, uh, you know, there were disagreements on why uh, or rather how the future of EGA would be um, if I were to stay along with Option Swing. And uh, since our. Uh, strategic alliances were not in the same place I decided to leave uh, the offer made for EGA was not substantial enough for me to continue providing services there uh, and hence I decided that I would like to be the eagle that flies from his own nest and finds a new home okay I'm being overly dramatic now but you get the idea um, I think that you know it's time for me to do my own thing and um, I want to feel, li I actually do feel liberated. Um, I'm very happy that I decided to do what I did. Uh, yeah, that's the 20, 30 second spiel. So welcome in. Uh, you know, still see a couple of you guys here. Um, fly T fly, will you make your own discord? That is to be advised. To be advised. Thanks for doing this. I'm new to, your, to options and I'm so blessed to find your channel. Absolutely no problem. Ni bui. Thank you for being here. Bro I'm, bro, I missed the old vibe in the OS chat back in March to August. I just joined back. It's low-key kind of dry. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. No comments, but you know what? Hit me in the DMs, man, so we can talk. I would love to, to, to discuss that with you, you know? What's up, Matthew? Good morning. How are you guys doing? Melissa, good morning. Hi, hi, Zoraida. Hello. Welcome in. Hello, Azucena. Welcome back. Alex, what's up? Um... Cool, Jacob, good morning. Good morning, Santosh, what's up, man? Cool, welcome all of you guys. Uh, let's get this started. So, uh, first things first, you know, we go through the news real quick to see what, uh, you know, the um, markets would be starting to price in, right? You know, we don't, we don't honestly look at the news for any purpose apart from understanding how retail traders will be looking at the news. For example, people who are just everyday investors who look at the news and say, oh my God, it's time to sell when the market tells them to sell. And then it's time to buy when the market tells them to buy, right? When you read the news and something is bullish, what do we do, guys? We go bearish, right? And when we see that the news is starting to spit bearish, then what do we do? We go bullish, right? Why? Because we know that retail traders are reading the news and doing exactly what the news says, right? If if somebody comes out, puts an article, says, oh, the US is entering a recession, right? What happens? then people start to get scared and they start selling their stocks. And that's what when we jump in and we buy those cheap stocks from them, right? So we always do the opposite of what the news tells us because the news is not exactly a very good way to create wealth, okay? Cool, Hong Kong Titans gathering, send civil servants home, okay? Moderna's plans to seek US EU clearance for COVID vaccine, okay? Stocks are poised for record month oil retreats. By the way, oil's retreating because of um, continued uh, pressures for supply. Uh, OPEC's going to meet today, by the way. This is going to be a big one. Uh, just FYI, guys, major caveat for this week. Make sure that you trade extremely, extremely lightly, okay? Uh, a lot of major economic news will be out this week, okay? And I expect the market to continue with its generally low vol volatility. Uh, we may see increase in uh, swings, but... I would say generally low volatility uh, because we have a bunch of news that will be coming out this week and I will brief you guys on what you have to keep track of this week so that you don't get yourself in a rut, okay? 
Uh, world's largest vaccine maker denies trial volunteers illness claims. Okay, I don't know what that is about. S&P to buy IHS for $39 billion in in the year's second biggest deal. That's interesting. IHS is another uh, market uh, participant there. It's a data provider. Uh, offering this many shares. Okay. Come on, Bloomberg. Give me more than one article for free. Come on. Oh, wow. 50%? Huh. Maybe I should get this. Maybe I should. Maybe I will. I don't know. Maybe I will. China oil giant targeted by U.S. after years of South China Sea tension. I, actually, you guys know my opinion. I don't really like Bloomberg that much. I read it because they have good headlines. Um, and that's, that's something that's important to me. Okay. Bloomberg looks hybridized not really bullish not really bearish uh let's look at uh wall street journal i actually have a subscription for this one because i actually like the articles s p 500 da, da, da. see huh wait a minute this hit 30 something billion this is 44 billion who is lying who is freaking lying man dow on track to finish best month in over three decades yep that's what we think uh hopefully i really hope that that's true Tokyo Stock Exchange CEO resigns over shutdown. Oh, yeah, this was a big problem last month. That was terrible. Uh, Credit Suisse spied on more employees than previously disclosed. Wow. Stock markets rally is finally widening. Okay, stock market. Well, the world's appetite for debt is smashing records and emissions clamp down. Okay, what does all of this sound to you guys? This sounds like a lot of bullish, bullish bulbul, right? It sounds like a lot of bullish bulbul. Um, and when we see bullish bull bull, this is when you got to be cautious, right? I think possibly a chance that we'll see some kind of a pullback today. Uh, you know, institutions starting to, to really set us up here. Um, okay, pre-market movers. Let's have a look. Anything interesting? Hexo. This is a, isn't this a cannabis stock? I think it is. Moderna up 13%. Wow. 13%, just like that. Su sundial growers oh never mind this is a 48 cent stock we're not gonna do that okay aurora what, what's up with all the pot stocks up double digits today did something come up palantir up four percent uh okay so today on the economic calendar you have um pending home sales this will be at 10 a.m so keep your eyes peeled for that one uh and then also opec meeting at uh wait i think this was oh this is 5 p.m yeah, so towards, I think actually after market closes. So this news will be actually pretty high impact news, but after market closes. Okay. Pending federal vote for pot. Really? Are you serious? No way. Where? Supreme Court? Wait, isn't that like something that the Supreme Court has to decide? Oh, that's interesting. I did not know that. Okay, then. Well, it might be one of those buy the news, sell the rumor, sell the room, buy the rumor, sell the news, sorry, uh, kind of events. Be careful there. So Moderna, we have, uh, let's see, Trimble, Plan, Synchrony Financial. Whoa, we talked about Synchrony Financial last week. Interesting. We talked about this one, huh? What did I say about Synchrony Financial? <laughs> SYF. We were talking about this last week, actually. Synchrony Financial was one that we were watching because of the fact that I said um, PayPal. What's going on with this? Why wouldn't it let me type the ticker? Huh. Interesting. Okay then. <laughs> yeah, we were, we spoke about Synchrony Financial last week, and we we actually even we. <laughs> We actually even said this was in a really nice trend line too, to be honest. Look at the daily chart on this one. It's beautiful, right? It's been a constant uptrend. It looked like it was really on, on the verge of popping and it did pop in the end. So this was a beautiful one. Beautiful setup here, actually, to be honest. Uh, let's see here. I want to make this a little thicker. Uh, so Synchrony Financial, we were talking about this stock because of... Uh, how uh, we were looking at PayPal as the ticker of the week last week. And PayPal is a business that does a lot of um, uh, number crunching and owns Venmo. And Venmo's card, which has been recently gaining popularity, is actually backed partly by Synchrony Financial, based on what I read. Uh, and so we were looking at Synchrony Financial popping up here a little bit because of uh, possible synergies between the two businesses that contribute to top and bottom line here. Uh, so we're looking at actually a pretty decent uptrend here, if you look at it. Uh 
We'll be looking for this thing to eventually pop out here. Uh, I do like this uh, little uptrend. This is kind of like a rising wedge here. This is always a nice little... I love this kind of a uh, pattern, to be honest. So pre-market, we're already breaking above it. I think Synchrony Financial is a nice uptrend here. Volume came in. You know, we have decent, decent, a decent setup here. I think this can be easily part of our watch list today. So we're going to actually go ahead and put that on there. Uh, just FYI, guys, uh, last week we took a day trade scalp on uh, DraftKings. For those of, you, those of you that don't follow this list, throughout the day, I actually update this list and I put in what I'm in. Like, for example, last Friday, I traded DraftKings for a cool $240 profit. And that was just one day trade that we did, which was nice. We entered the call at uh, 178 and then it was a $50 call. And then we scaled in five more contracts on the pullback, got in at $2, and then scaled out three contracts, and then scaled out all at $218. Uh, the link for this is going to be posted in the chat. But also, if you want the link any other time, you can go to my Twitter my Twitter page and then on the Twitter page here you will find a link on my it's pinned to my channel but anyway this is the um, that's the link in the chat for you guys I just posted it there uh, no you don't get uh, notifications when you update it this is a temporary this is a temporary situation guys as I've mentioned before this is a temporary situation stay tuned <laughs> stay tuned okay <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything else just saying Stay tuned, all right? <laughs> so, um, so, we'll add Synchrony Financial for, to this one, actually, because I like this setup. Um, oh, and then also, since this trade is done now, we're actually going to go ahead and move it to our trade journal, uh, which is something that we're doing now. So, whenever a trade goes, you know, profit or loss, we log it here, and this gives us our net p &L, uh, which, you know, over time, we can track how much of money we're losing or gaining, and so right now, over two weeks, we are net up, right? We're, we're up on our portfolio. If you have been following all the trades so far, right? You can see the net p &L is all of that, right? And so we're up $296 for the past two weeks, okay? Here's your p &L. So we'll go ahead and just do that real quick. So that you can see it. So this will be a running PL, um, and over time, you know, it'll be something that's continually updated here. So when I when I, when the trades are done from here, I move them into the other, um, into the other chat so that we we don't crowd this too much. So for today, we'll be watching SYF. This will be something to watch. Um, Uh, and we'll be looking at this for a potential, you know, day trade, swing trade. Oh, thank you, Keston, for the $5 donation. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. You're, I've forgotten what it feels like to receive money from you guys. <laughs> I feel like the last time somebody donated to this channel was months ago. <laughs> thank you very much. That was def That's definitely going to be buy me a coffee sometime soon. Uh, so I appreciate that very much. Okay, so SYF, that's going to be one of them on the watch list today. Uh, sorry, I don't. I didn't mean to sidetrack here, but this is one of the ones that we want. We want to do. Cool. Uh, let's uh, let's get this done here. So pre market, we went through this. Uh, okay, SYF Zoom is also in the pre market here. Uh, Three percent. Let's have a look at Zoom real quick. You guys know Zoom. It's no stranger. Everybody knows Zoom. Wow, actually not a bad chart at all on the one hour. This looks like a decent looking cup and handle that's forming. Um, you know, hold up real quick. Let me get my marker here so that you guys can see this. It's a pretty decent cup and handle. I mean, you know, oh, too thin, too thin, right? You can see it's kind of like a cup and handle that's forming. And if we can see that, then we'll see a nice little push up here. Uh, we'll we'll definitely have uh, you know something for that perhaps 
Uh, Zoom is looking great here for a bounce on this uh, 200 moving average. I think, uh, you know, it, it might look like it, it possibly may go up to test this uh, dual zone here at 508. So maybe a $500 call. This could be a potential good trade for this week, to be honest. It's already at 484 pre-market. It's had its bullish breakout here. Uh, you know, having a little bit of a upward channel kind of a thing going on, right? You can see that. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and draw that in real quick. There we go. Uh, possible rejection here. And we'll also go in and draw the Fibonacci retracement later on. Uh, okay, so the link to the um, to the sheet is going to be in the chat. I, I, I literally I, I pasted it in the chat. Here, here you go again. Here's the link again. Uh, so you can click on that and join the the the, the sheet and uh, you know just have the sheet open because what I do generally speaking during the day if I take a trade I'll be like like you know I'll be typing all these different things here like for example you know okay this is a good volume plus scalp opportunity and then entry position one contract first right I scale in and then okay I move my stop loss to break break even and then I'll bold it you know. Maybe I'll, I'll put like update and I'll maybe I'll even put the time here so that you guys, you know, get it. I, I'm going to remember this is all temporary. So this is like a makeshift system right now. But, you know, very soon we'll have something much better. OK, uh, so just just keep your keep your eyes open and uh, just keep attending the stream, guys. You know, that's the only thing I can ask for. Also, make sure you guys smash the like button because that's the only way the EGA tribe gets bigger. Uh, if you can take a second out of your day and hit the like button on this stream, that will really honestly be much really helpful for me. Uh, you know, of course, needless to say, if you want to donate anything, there's always a way to click on the uh, uh, the stickers or the um, uh, custom emojis that you want to send. Uh, and if you don't want to do that, then all I ask for is for you to hit the like button. Uh, that's that's honestly all I can ask for. OK, cool. Let me read some of these comments here. I, I feel like there's a lot of them. Damn. Uh, what do you think of Apple? I'll do that later for sure. Uh, thank you for doing this. No problem. Uh, let's see. Holy, you pronounce my name right. Love you already. <laughs> well, <laughs> I am from Asia. I have to pronounce all Asian people's names right. So, uh, let's see. What's up, Michael? Good morning. What's up, Jared? Hi, Shoei. Welcome. Hi, Evelyn. What do you think of Apple? I'll get to that in a second. Salome, I'll get that later. What's up, Byron? How are you doing? Good morning. Hi, hi, Patrick. Zoom. What do you guys? What do you guys think? Okay. Uh, well, we were just about. We were just talking about Zoom. Careful for the. The pullback here, I say, you know, there's a small little supply zone here that you got to be really careful about, like right here. This is your danger zone above right here. Uh, so be careful this zone, because what I do see is a potential reversal here. And it also is going to coincide with the top of the channel here. Uh, you know, RSI is super overbought here on the one hour chart. I think that, you know, a retracement on Zoom is more than likely. So be careful with Zoom. <coughs> um house in congress votes okay cool that's why i've popped i was watching it too after you called it out <laughs> sorry francesco but sometimes you know <laughs> uh good morning everybody smash the like button if you haven't thank you man appreciate that robert what's up good morning man keston hello uh thank you for the fight all keston appreciate that keep up the good work thank you thank you uh let's see can you go over apple today sure i'll go over apple in a little bit do you have a watch us up all the time if so where can we see it i don't have twitter this is the watches i just posted the link okay and to baba these levels we'll talk about in a second alf afa okay we'll see that later da, da, da. earnings this week for zoom full is twitter see the shit okay cool all right we have z breakdowns okay now the next thing we want to go through here is obviously uh the pre-market uh, uh technical analysis for spy nasdaq and dow jones and we do this every single session on mondays wednesdays and fridays by the way guys all hundred of you that are here make sure you guys smash the like button because today is a live trading session which means that i will be live trading with you guys today um i promised you guys that i will do this on monday and so i am and so today we will have a live trading session together so later sometime before 10 30 uh, at 10 20 ish i'll start answering your questions breaking down things and then we'll start prepping for pre-market here so that we can maybe potentially catch positions for uh, market open, okay? Um, so today will be indeed be a live trading session and we will be doing the live trading session on YouTube here, okay? Uh, so don't leave if you want to be a part of the live trading session because we will be doing it on the stream. I'll be on here for about an hour into market open, 
guiding you guys what I'm looking at, give you my thought process on things, and just help you guys out in general. Because uh, I love doing that kind of stuff. Okay? So if you, you know, if you like that kind of stuff, make sure you stick around. All right? And if you want to continually see these live trading sessions, how about you do something? Like put a fire or a love emoji in the chat, and that way I'll know how many of you like these things. Okay? So if you want to see a live trading session more often, go ahead, drop a fire or a love emoji in the chat and let's see how many of you actually post one. Also, make sure you guys smash the like button because that's the only thing that I asked for. Thank you. Okay, let's have a look at this now. Um, this week, we have a jam-packed calendar, okay? Right before I get into this uh, uh, session here where we go do the breakdown, uh, remember that today we have major news on pending home sales and Chicago PMI, which is the purchase purchases manufacturing index. Okay. And then tomorrow we'll have ISM manufacturing index construction spending. And then the next day we'll have ADP employment report. Okay. On Wednesday. All right. On Thursday, we are going to have initial job, jobless claims and continuing jobless claims. And on Friday we'll have non farm payroll and the unemployment rate. Okay. Now, through this next week itself and this week, I believe that we're going to have the, the Fed speaking on a different, a few different matters. Okay. The Fed is actually going to be speaking on a few different matters. Therefore, you have to be extremely careful when trading this week. I highly recommend not swinging anything until Friday and then the next week, you're not going to really have like a shit ton of stuff that's coming out but i would say you know still be just watchful this is a terrible time to be swinging stuff in my opinion all right i would aim for snipes you really want to be doing snipes <laughs> damn bro you put an eggplant emoji okay i see you <laughs> oh that was a whole lot of hearts and fires i appreciate you guys thank you for the love guys thank you thank you thank you very much cool 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 right so let's get into the uh, SPY, NASDAQ, and Dow Jones technical update here. Uh, as you guys know, I never changed these lines. We broke out of this down channel that we were in with the NASDAQ, remember that? Uh, and technically speaking, we could still get rejected here, if, if anything. We could get rejected here, right? Why? Because we've been, re we've been rejected at this point two times now. This could be a triple top here, okay? It could be a triple top and then heading into a kind of a double bottom, tri triple bottom as well. Uh, as I mentioned before, I, I see very unlikely um, that we will rally very strongly immediately just like that, okay? Although, uh, I do see signs that we want to go up here to test this level once again. So, we are already there. Expect this to be bullish for maybe one or two days more or maybe a couple of days more. And then, you know, we'll see a drop come in to kind of uh, test the 200 moving average or the 150 moving average. Uh this 61.8 Fibonacci should come into play again. It almost came into play here last week, but didn't quite make it there. Uh, there was some bullishness that pushed the market back up again to where we were seeing it go before. We had a retracement target that we still haven't hit. Okay, remember this was our retracement target. This was actually our retracement target here at the 50 uh, Fibonacci level, which we still haven't hit. Okay, so chances are that in the future, we may come down and hit that level again. All right, that's your NASDAQ update. Bullish in the short term, bearish in the slightly longer term, okay? With SPY, we're almost breaking out to all-time high here, okay? With SPY, we're breaking out to all-time high, almost. Uh, also, the similar situation, except for I really don't feel comfortable with this. It's almost looking rounded like this, right? Looks like it's setting up for a fall, but ah. Uh, it's gonna be a tough one to tell, okay? This is usually bullish pattern, okay? We're making higher highs, right? Making higher, uh, the high, these highs are not exactly higher, but still, you see what I'm saying, it's like an uptrend, right? Um, if we do break 3665, right? Then we're going definitely much higher, okay? That's what I see here. Uh, it, the, the key level to break below would be this level here, which would be uh, your three five, three five five ish, three five five zero. That would be your short term bearish scenario for spy. Okay. And the Dow Jones, on the other hand, 
this is very, very, you know, was very, very bullish. And I think it's time for a mini retracement, right? I think it's time for a mini retracement here. So Dow Jones should come down to about 28. This yellow line here, this is what we were looking at for it to come down to coincide with the 200 moving average before making another run up. So therefore, I would avoid I would avoid heavily bullish plays right now. This is my um, recommendation for the week, okay? Avoid heavily bullish plays. Don't take heavy bullish positions. Uh, things are starting to approach fairy tale land, right? Levels where, uh, you know, there's irrational exuberance. Like, yeah, 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 the market's gonna keep going. The market's gonna keep going, right? And when that happens, what happens? Usually we have a sell off, right? So you gotta be careful and hedge up here, okay? Uh, I have been hedged with Dow Jones Industrial Average puts for the past two weeks that are about a month out in next period, okay? So therefore, my recommendation is go light on heavy positions. If you're planning to take a heavy position, scale back your quantity by half at least, whatever that you're thinking, okay? <clears throat> and avoid swing trading. You want to avoid swing trading during this time, okay? Uh, granted, Tesla has gone parabolic and it's like $600 by the way just FYI guys <laughs> Tesla doing Tesla things as usual um, after a little bit of a month off there um, okay so let's talk about Apple you guys wanted me to break down Apple and then in about three minutes uh, I'm gonna talk about Raytheon which is the ticker of the week how are you guys doing today you can hear me all fine in the, on the, the chat I mean on the the stream uh, there's a hundred some of you guys here. I wish that all of you guys would take a second out of your day to smash the like button. That's honestly the only thing I can ask from you when you're here on the stream. My only ask is for you to hit the like button because that's the only way the stream reaches more people. Okay. Uh, if you want more people to join the EJ tribe, then please just take a second out of your day and hit the like button. Thank you very much. Okay, so many of you were asking me about Apple here, so let's have a look. On the four hour, we're looking at still a uptrend. We're still looking at uptrend pretty much, right? Well, it's starting to look, it's starting to look like the uptrend is starting to fade. That's what I would say. On the daily chart, yeah, this is looking also What's interesting is well, I do see a possible buy up zone here. This is actually a demand zone right here. You can see that very obviously. Every time the stock dips to this level, it gets bought up. Uh, so this level was your last demand zone. It does actually look bullish to me uh, in the short run here. A possible run up to 120 is, I think, likely if it gains momentum. And the only thing about Apple recently is that it hasn't been gaining momentum. Um, on the one hour, this looks slightly bearish, actually. On the one hour, this looks bearish. If we needed to clear this level here. So what you want to see with Apple here is a simple thing here. Okay. A break above 117.61. Or actually, you know, if you want to be really safe, you just take one set. Yeah. 117.70. A break above 117.70 with good volume and momentum pushing up here would mean uh, Apple 120 calls. That's what I would do. 120 calls and you write this up for a day trade if it's possible with the momentum and everything else you can't take this if it doesn't have momentum okay uh, also let's have a really quick look at the volume strategy here and see what's going on with that as well so let's do this yeah so it could it could go it could go either way actually it could it could go either way so uh, you can have a look at this real quick. Um, so session volume wise, 
uh, you can see, I think uh, there's a higher chance that we, we go further down than we go up, actually. Uh, let's see here. Actually, there's an equal chance here as well. Possible filling this volume here. This one might be a bit too far off. This one also possible. Um, damn, it's evenly split between up and down here, I would say. Uh, essentially, what I'm looking at here is the session volume. Um, and so you see these red lines here. These are what we call the point of control. Okay, This is where the price action was controlled Okay, by uh, buyers and sellers. All right. Uh, and so usually uh, this is something I learned from a previous uh, a trader, a trader friend of mine, uh, a previous mod was, you know, if these POCs are close together, this forms a very strong zone for retracement or extension. Okay. Um, and so there's one that's pretty far, fairly close up here, but this already doubled as a high volume zone. Okay. So we're going to actually reject that value. Okay. And then there are a couple points up here where volume needs to flow. And there are a couple points below here that volume needs to flow. So these two are actually equal zones at which Apple can volume can flow. What do we call this? This is what we call a liquidity void. Liquidity void. Okay. Uh, it's what we call grabbing some paint. You know, you kind of have like a, a, a paint thingy, right? And uh, what you're trying to do is, you know, you grab your roller, you come in here, you, you roll, 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 right? And you grab some paint, and then what do you do? You paint your wall, right? You paint your wall. So we come down here to grab paint, or we go up here to grab paint. There are two ways you can go. And where do we usually go to grab paint? We go to grab paint where there is lack of volume. All these points are your potential zones to grab paint, okay? So going along with the market positioning, Apple follows very strongly the S&P 500, right? And so if you're looking at the S&P 500 here, we're looking at uh, uh, bearish retracement in the, short in the short run, right? So what does that do? That puts downward pressure on Apple. And here we see a rejection of the 200 moving average here. <coughs> the inability to break out here. We'll see if we can hold this level. So what you need to see is either a break below 117 or if we break below 115.63, that's going to be your entry to the downside. Okay, so a break above here, we go bullish. A break below here, we go bearish. That's, that's generally how we're going to be looking at this. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Let me know, guys. Give me some feedback if, if you know, things like this are, are helping you understand better. Because, uh, you know, th these are things that I enjoy teaching. So um, I hope that you guys gain some insights just from being here. Cool, cool, cool. Make sure you guys smash the like button if you like that one. Uh, okay, we're going to cover Raytheon now. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this is the ticker of the week. Uh, Raytheon is an interesting one. We have um, pretty much a bunch of different things going on here. Uh, you know, we have... Supply and demand zones all across. Cool. Uh, now, this stock is a defense stock, okay? Uh, and as per my 2020 report that I put out at the start this year, I don't know, I think maybe many of you have read it, but I'm also in the works of doing the 2021 report now. Uh, so, you know, I'll have the 2021 report out for all the mentees who have been part of the Everyday Growth Advisors Mentorship course, uh, you will get my report for free, obviously. Uh, it'll be sent to your email, deliver it, sign in, deliver it by yours truly. Uh, I'll be doing a report uh, on the next year's, uh, you know, uh, things that we'll be looking at uh, in across, uh, looking at across market depth and obviously all the different sectors, uh, you know, pretty much like a comprehensive report. Uh, definitely be watching for that sometime in the end of January. I'll be sending that one out. Um, now, as per my rec report in 2020 January, I mentioned that the DOD, the, Def the, the Department of Defense, okay, increased their budget for, uh, for uh, defense by about, I think it was $5 billion? The budget increased by $5 billion this year, okay? 
And uh, this five billion budget was spent uh, exclusively on a couple of line items. Okay. Now, uh, increase in the DoD's budget is pretty standard by the Pentagon, uh, but I think uh, you know that was also partly because we had a, a Republican pe president in the House, which is uh, you know driving defense spend spending up, right? Uh, now with Biden in there, I'm not really sure if it will be the same thing, but we will be, um, you know, watchful to see what he does. Usually, actually, America spends o overspends any um, country in terms of defense, uh, so I don't really see at that being a big issue uh, in the in the long run. Raytheon is a company that does a lot of defense stuff. Okay, they do a lot of production of planes and uh, stuff like that. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at uh, you know their their company report here by Morningstar, and what bulls and bears are saying first of all. Uh, so this company actually has a pretty decent economic moat because they do exclusively they sell uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, parts and a lot of defense related uh, defense related. Uh, contractual obligations to the uh, Pentagon and various different uh, defense businesses within the US government, okay? So Pratt and Whitney's placement on the A320 family and A220 aircraft should substantially increase the company's install base of engines, which would unlock decades of high margin servicing revenue. This is one thing that's good, what bulls are saying. The firm's missile and missile defense segment produces products that are prioritized by the national defense strategy which should lead to consistent growth okay that's good see we want businesses like that who are contractually obligated by the government right we want that raytheon technologies is well balanced between commercial aerospace aerospace and defense which would partially insulate and combine firm from a down downturn in either segment except for they recently got hit very badly with COVID, right so that's why the stocks got sold off like crazy right um now one of the driving factors behind the breakup of United Technologies was to create more focused businesses. This is what Bears are saying. While the combined Raytheon Technologies is more focused on aerospace and defense, it is also large and difficult to manage. So before this, Raytheon was two companies, United Technologies and something else. Now they've merged to become Raytheon, right? Uh, Boeing and Airbus have been taking increasing, in, increasing interest in... Wait, what? Have taken increasing interested this is this is the grammar here is throwing me off a little bit have taken increasing interested in compressing i think they meant to say have taken increasing interest yeah <laughs> in compressing the margins of their component suppliers such as collins airspace and it would take years for airlines to recover the damage from covid 19. okay that one we don't need that kind of bad juju here <laughs> but um the idea here is to look at you know what analysts are talking about in terms of bulls and bears okay we make our own decisions at the end of the day we want to read these reports just to see what other people are saying okay now uh, raytheon technologies is a business that specializes in a bunch of different things uh, by the way this company is actually decent only that you know obviously re has been suffering recently because of stock price uh but Actually, it's doing much better than expected. So they do, um, it's a merger between United Technologies and Raytheon with a rough, roughly equal exposure as supplier to the commercial aerospace manufacturers and defense market as a prime subprime contractor. The company operates in four segments, Pratt & Whitley, engine manufacturer, Collins Aerospace, which is a diversified aerospace supplier, and intelligence, space, and airborne systems, a mix between a sensors business and a government IT contractor and integrated defense and missile system. Uh, a defense prime contractor focusing on missiles and missile defense hardware. So they do a lot of different things. Now, um, one thing is that, you know, obviously Raytheon's not the only kid on the block that does this. Remember, Boeing is also in the same market segment, okay? And then you also have Northrop Grumman. You also have a bunch of others who are, you know, part of this uh, whole... Uh, shebang here. Let me show you real quick. Right here, Lockheed Martin, RTX. Uh, you know you have your um, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, 
right? You have, uh, uh, what is this, General Dynamics, you have uh, Transdime Group, uh, Huntington, Textron. These are all companies within the aerospace and defense sector, okay? So they're all competing against each other. So you gotta be careful. Uh, know which one of these is the strong ones, okay? Now, obviously, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, and Boeing, they, they're, they're actually one of the bigger ones. Uh, so that's a good thing, okay? That's a good thing. This is this. These are the bigger ones. You can see if by the size. They actually, you, you, I have I have this uh, track by the size. Um, one month wise, market's looking super green. Three months wise, you can see what's lagging here. Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft. You know your usual suspects. Uh, Microsoft is undervalued. I must say, keep saying this, and I'll keep repeating it until you guys get it that this is a great stock to own long term. Uh, you know, buy some Microsoft leaps and hold them, and you will never be dissatisfied. I think. Okay, um, from a technical perspective, this stock has recently broken out of this trend that it was in. Okay, uh, a break above 75.49 would send the stock flying higher. But I think right now it needs to make a retracement back to the 50 moving average. For it to find some support before another move up. Okay. We need to find that one wave, two wave movement, right? That's your one wave, two wave movement and we'll enter on the second wave, right? This is your first wave, oops. It's your first wave and your second wave, right? So we wanna enter on the second wave here, which will be our entry. Okay. Uh, so this should be an interesting one. We'll keep a watch on it, RTX. <coughs> Bullish trajectory. Waiting on pullback. This one is bullish trajectory, waiting on consolidation. Cool. So we have those things sorted out. Uh, now here was their Q3 uh, earnings. This company had sales in line with expectations, better than expected uh, EPS and free cash flow, robust defense backlog of over 70 billion. They have a $70 billion backlog on defense, um, executing costs and uh, reduction of cash conservative con conservation action. So they had reduced about uh, 700 million cost reduction and then uh 1.9 billion dollars of cash conversion so they sold uh you know money market stuff or uh you know bonds and stuff like that over time uh, we gotta obviously do more digging into that by wednesday we, we should know more of that when i go through the fundamental analysis uh, for people who are here for the first time welcome in make sure you guys smash the like button subscribe if you haven't we do this monday wednesdays and fridays for now um, and you know, this is a educational stream that simplifies financial education, gives you a nice pre-market breakdown here. And then we're going to do a live trading session a little later together. Okay. Um, cool. For all the spreadsheets, is it possible for you to share links to your charts for the tickers on watch? Sure. That's not a bad idea, actually. Uh, let's see, where should I put it? Maybe I'll just do it here. <coughs> and maybe I can do, uh, let's see. I think it's gonna be Not a snapshot, so it's got to be sharing. There we go. Uh, I think I share the link now. Is that how to do it? Let's see. How do I... Let me see if it loads real quick. 
Come on. It can't be this one. This is an image one. No, I don't want that. Uh, how do you... Anyone know how you share the... The URL link, but it's not loading though. That's the problem. Copy the link in the browser. Okay, let's see. Let's see if it works for you guys. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and ha link it here, and somebody go ahead and uh, check if, if if it works. Okay, go ahead check check it out. This was the URL I, I tagged it. So if somebody can go in and check if it works, that would be good. And then if it doesn't, then it is what it is. Sorry. Okay, this should possibly work. I hope it does. Cool, you should be able to see that. Okay, cool, awesome. All right, in that case, uh, that's, oh, sorry, that was this one right here, that's RTX. So that's not that. Um, and this one would be SYF. And we'll go ahead and do, wait, isn't this the same link? What the hell? Oh, I just went, I just went dark mode. This is interesting. Wait, so now if you click on this, then wh where does that go? It goes to SYF. But what about, wait, what? Oh, it goes to whatever that I'm showing you? Why can't I do more than one? That's just stupid. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess we'll have to do it like this then. Like this, I guess. Okay, whatever. Um, It's funny because here, let me show, let me explain to you what's going on here. So if I click on SYF, the URL doesn't change. You see, it doesn't change. And so, uh, you know, if I want to save this, it's not gonna. Anybody, everyone with the link can view and copy. Yep, that's fine. Um, but the URL still stays the same. You see what I mean? So this URL for RTX is still the same URL. You see what I mean? and it's not going to change the, 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 the chart so okay I'll try to fix that a little later no worries it's a small thing uh, announcement announced actions this is a couple of things that they did by the way cost reduction 15,000 uh, reduction or uh, hit, hit count so they actually fired pe 15,000 people which during times like this they have to temporary furloughs 4,000 contractor roles reduced um, Let's see, hiring freeze and merit deferrals, discipline hiring and support defense growth, um, and then footprint reduction, high cost, high cost to low cost, process optimi optimization. Um, so they're doing a lot to prolong the life of the business. 
Uh, okay. And then... They're actually positive FCF here, which is great. This is what we want. Cash flow from continued operations also positive, which is good. And yeah. Here are your uh, quarterly trends. And your segment highlights. So we'll go through more of this stuff on Wednesday uh, during our uh, fundamental analysis. Uh, but from my standpoint right now, RTX is, you know, definitely a, uh, a hold. It's not like a buy or a sell signal. It's a hold. You got to watch to see what happens to me personally. I would like for this to come back down here, right? To the 50 moving average before I initiate the buy to the upside, you know, that will confirm my hypothesis of my, uh, you know, uptrend here. I think it may even come back down to like this region, to be honest. You know a more signified like uptrend here there's a high chance it comes down to somewhere here you know at sixty dollars that's why i would think uh you know this demand zone here should be tested again that's what i'm thinking but we'll look at what the stock is worth on uh, wednesday so make sure you guys come back for that on wednesday uh remember today we have a live trading session so i'm going to be preparing for that in a second here uh, but I hope the link to this thing works now. I'll try to figure out the other one later. Okay, let's uh, see what the chat's saying here. I think you guys asked a bunch of questions earlier. Earnings is this week for Zoom. Yeah, it is. 4th December, Friday. Zoom might rally till then. A break above this zone would be super bullish. And it might send it flying back up to 600 bucks. Um, RMG. Oh boy. No, man. I don't want to touch the stock with a 10 foot pole. That's crazy. What in the world? It's a it's this is a super pack man. It's a S pack. I wouldn't I wouldn't play it. Avoid S packs guys. It's not a good thing right now to be honest. Avoid this. I mean it could possibly go, Jason, but I I, I personally wouldn't play it. Just saying. Thoughts on QS for long and short. QS. What is that? Quantum Scape Corp. Did this just IPO? Did this like literally IPO yesterday? What is this business? Oh, wow. Interesting. Which one of you knew about this? <laughs> Not even watching stuff like that. Uh, the stock is up big time. Pre-market. Lithium ion batteries for electric cars? Oh man, I don't know. I mean, it could be, it could be possible, but I would say be careful. There might be lots of hocus pocus and a lot of nonsense going on here today. So be extremely careful. Extended hours already looks interesting here. Some volume flowing in. Um, XOM puts possibly for the short term. But long term, I'm still long on energy and financials, just FYI. Thoughts on Salesforce buying Slack? Uh, I think it's a good vertical integration. Uh, let's see. AMD, 100 calls for next January. 100 calls, maybe a bit of a stretch, but not impossible. I see it bullish again. Uh, a break above, you know, this... $88 with good volume, 89 actually would be a good sign to take this up 
to uh, 95 ish. Baba. Baba's thanking hard? Why? Oh, 268. Wow. Uh, Baba's getting rejected here. Looking bearish again. Uh, this could be a dead cat bounce. Possible. PLTR, $20 puts for $12.24. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, $20 though? Yeah, possible. I would say so. Sure, why not? But I think your expiry is too near. This is a good zone. That's a demand zone. Uh, but I, I think that your expiry is too near. I think you should go further out. Kwesi? Kwesi? Any thoughts on VIX holding $20 calls for 1231? I would hold them. They're cheap. Hold them. Generally cheap, I would say. And this can pop if the market comes down. If fear comes back in. Can you share your custom script for the resistance and support line? This is actually a custom script from uh, Trading View. Click on the FX indicators and type pattern smart. And it's this one right here. Swing high, low support and resistance by pattern smart. 20,000 uh, users. And you can star it so that it will be in your favorites. And all I did was change the color of it. That's all. Um... Okay, Nicola put. Uh, SPACs are uh, businesses that are in the process of acquiring another business. Uh, they're basically special purpose acquisition corporations. That's what an SPAC is. So they're set up to purchase another company, pretty much. Like how Nicola was once another company and then they purchase all the shares and then they become Nicola, something like that. That's what a SPAC is. Uh, and I'm going to tell you right now that banks are going to be the ones who are going to benefit from a lot of the, uh, these SPACs that are forming. Zoom earnings today. Oh, is it today? I thought it was this week. Microsoft is backing QS. Yeah, that's what uh, I was reading as well, right? Bill Gates. Something along those lines. I think it's too late to play ER run up on crowd. Possibly. If you think it's too late, it's too late. Yep, it's too late. Yeah, definitely too late. Damn, we missed CrowdStrike, guys. Oh my god. How do we miss this? Jeez. What a run. Wow. We totally slipped on this one. Damn. Why didn't anyone remind me of CrowdStrike? Blink to go back up. BLNK. Blink Charging Company. Um, uh, maybe, but it's got to break. It's got to break this this level here, thirty dollars and twenty five cents before you take this to the upside. Crowd looking to break above its all time high in supply zone with volume. Yeah, this is th this is this is a good one potentially. This is a good one potentially. Above one fifty four. Above 154 will be interesting. Let's put crowd on our watch list. This will be a FOMO play. Uh, CRM weekly call for ER for tomorrow. Um, the last time Salesforce had an insane earnings, right? This was an insane earnings. Uh, I don't know, man. I see lots of people dumping this stock this past few days. Interesting for sure, though. I personally think that Salesforce will probably beat ER again. That's what I think. But I can't be sure, obviously. this It's a coin flip either way, man. 
Snapchat $51 calls for this week. Snapchat also bullish breakout here. Snapchat will be the, another one to watch. Um, let's see. Apple call one eighteen. I just I spoke about I spoke about Apple earlier, uh, guys. This has got two levels. You got to watch one one seven and one one five. Break above one one seven bullish. Break below one one five would be bearish into this demand zone here. Be careful. That's why I, I mentioned earlier with Apple. Amazon three thousand two hundred calls for January. Oh, the market's open right now, by the way. So let's see what's going on. All right, let's have a look real quick. Um, okay. Dow Jones looking like a little bit of a sell-off. We have S&P 500 looking a little weak here as well. I expect a little bit of a pullback today. That's what I'm expecting. NASDAQ continuing its partial bullish run here. We'll see what potentially sets up here. Uh, we'll be looking at a couple of things here, so let's put them all together. All right, we'll watch CrowdStrike on the 15 minute here. Uh, Apple will be another good one to watch here today. Apple with some bullish volume here at the open. Lots of Apple getting bought up. Our DIA hedges are at an entry zone, if you, in case you guys want to take it. Um, okay. Apple's looking interesting. But I, I feel like this may be a counterplay here. We could be going for Apple puts instead. We'll see how that plays out, though. CrowdStrike also volume here on the, on the market open. A lot of NASDAQ stocks here with good volume at the open. Uh, what were the other ones? Snapchat. Snapchat with the relatively, sh I want to say, flat open here. Snapchat no volume. Ticker of the week, SYF. Let's look at SYF as well. <gasps> Synchrony Financial, big volume came in as well. AMD calls. Let's see, RTX here. RTX looking like it's going to get rejected and the Dow Jones bearish here. This might be a good setup here for RTX puts. It might be a good setup, but we'll only take it on the break of this here, which will be 71.33. Let's go ahead and put a alert here. So we're crossing this level. We know. Okay. Some of you guys are saying AMD. Not just yet with AMD, be careful there. Hold up. UPS. <clears throat> UPS may be a, a good candidate for 
a longer term call play. I was also looking at Walmart the other day. This is another great one. Look at this nice little setup here. You can see a nice little ascending kind of a wedge here on Walmart. This is another potential play here. The VIX is rising. Is that true? Yep, it is. VIX is potentially rising. Just a little bit. Yeah, I would say VIX calls here are, are not a bad idea. As I've been saying for a long time. Synchrony Financial breaking out here. Let's see if we can hold this level here. Uh, a nice wave down would give us an entry. A bounce on this uh, level here would be good. Let's see if we can actually get it. Nikola with the drop. Okay. Crowd strike breakout. And let's see if we can hold. Apple also break out with the hole. Let's see if we can do that. I, I, I don't know, but I don't see this. Ah, SPY selling off. Dow Jones selling off. NASDAQ going to follow suit. So, okay, I say, you know, if you want to take anything, please don't be taking, um, please do not be taking any bullish positions right now. Okay, don't be taking bullish positions. This is a good time to short Apple here, by the way. The index pressure will cause it to go down a little bit, right? If you want to take a day trade, obviously not just yet, like not right now, but wait for the confirmation. But you can see what's going on here, right? S&P 500 selling off a little bit. The Dow Jones also selling off a little bit. NASDAQ will take its time, but it will eventually follow these two, okay? So you got to learn how to read all the indices before you do that. Piton, ascending triangle. Oh, yes. Oh, nice one. I like that, Landon. That's a good one. Nice ascending triangle here. Yeah, I like this one. Piton, this is one to watch. Katie, how long should you hold a swing play? It depends. It depends on your on the time horizon of the trade, where you took it, the contract price, everything. Everything matters in the swing trade. Every single thing. Let's see what's in the flow today. Lots of bullish flow, QQQ calls, Tesla call, 630 calls for next week. 1.3 million dollars put into this thing. Riot. Okay. What is SNDL? Sundial? What is that? NVIDIA. The flow is looking bullish. But it could be all day trade setups. Let's see how the indexes do here continually. If you get rejected, we can't sell off more, then I say, you know, go bullish. But Dow is looking bearish here. The Dow is looking bearish. This is a great setup for RTX puts here, guys. Just saying it right now. Our ticker of the week, it might be a good setup for a short position. Approaching, a, you know, a supply zone up here and the index that it's in, which is uh, generally going to be the Dow Jones Industrial mm -hmm. Average, uh, is bearish, right? Is bearish. And so this will cause uh, RTX to actually fall here. That's kind of annoying. Wow. Okay, then. All right, then. Don't hold back now, Flo. I'll go. <laughs> Jeez. Lots of flow just came in. Net. Riot. Riot. No, these are smaller flow. Apple. This one is 115 calls. This is a day trade. Uh, 119 here. This one's a potential smart money play. Oh, not really. Day trade. Apple here going up. Um, 
rotation out of industrials into tech possibly, but then I still see tech coming down though. Fastly and Nike. Jeez. More Apple coming in, XOM coming in, AMD coming in. Okay. Let's look at Fastly first. Ooh, Fastly is nice. Fastly is nice. I like this one. Uh, breaking out from this little wedge. That's definitely interesting. Lots of Apple flow. We can't take Apple here though. We need to wait for a pullback. We, we can't do this right now. Sorry, I meant to change that to candles so that we can see the day, the day movement here. Apple 125 calls for January. This is a swing trade. Gotta wait for the retracement here on Apple. If you want to play it, Facebook, Apple. These are probably a bit too late though. Like you're seeing them a little late. Nike. Oops. Nike's bearish here. Nike's looking bearish. Double top and then the rejection volume flowed out big time here. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, Michael. I'm, I'm thinking the exact same thing. Indexes are bearish. I would short Apple. First thing I would short is Apple. So let's actually go take a bearish position on Apple. 118 puts should be decent here. Let me check the contract and see how much they cost. Huh, not even that expensive. 118 puts are actually pretty cheap. $2.32 for next week expiries. IV is at 31, open issues 1,300. I feel like, yeah, I think this is a good contract to take. Uh, you know, I might do this one. Entry position temporarily. One contract at 220, let's see what price I get filled. 222. This is a active trade here. I'm gonna put a stop loss here at two dollars and twenty uh, two dollars. Cool. Let's see what where that goes. Yeah. Cool. We'll keep that one open for a little bit. Uh, I know there was a price target increase on this one, but we'll just take a short day trade here to play the Apple uh, pullback here. 222 is my entry, in case you guys were looking. Okay. Uh, Synchrony Financial still continues to push up here. So does CrowdStrike. Also might be a good play here, CrowdStrike. Might be a good bearish play. To bet against the Nasdaq, but I don't, uh, not, don't, not really feeling a, bull, a bearish trade against this one. I would rather do a bullish trade against this one. Uh, 
Nike is bearish as I said I mentioned whoever was asking me let's see the Nasdaq get rejected here that would be nice for our Nike trade sorry for our Apple trade uh, Amazon da, 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 da. lots of Apple bullish flow came in though so this is gonna really act against our contract to be honest but it's fine I'm willing to hold it I took next week expiries for that reason and it's just one contract that I'm holding Morning T, I'm in QCOM 150.12.4 here. Cool. Calls. Oh, that's nice. That's not bad. Yeah, I like that. Not bad at all. Let's put app let's put Apple right here actually. We might need to hold Apple for a little bit. Yeah, QCOM looks interesting for sure. Um, Tilray, XLE, AMD. Okay. We have the one Apple call. SYF, not really doing much. RTX, that was another one that we wanted to play. Nvidia, what do you see with Nvidia? They have an event today, have they? Um, I think uh, I saw a lot of flow on Nvidia, Nvidia, but yeah, this stock has been beaten down for a while. I think it might be time for it to start mooning though, soon. Interesting for sure. Nvidia, I mean, they just had earnings about two weeks ago, or a week and a half ago. To be honest, I wouldn't make a decision right now. Uh, let's see what happens. It needs to break above this level for me to take any calls on it. 545. Apple strong, yeah. Ah, I'm about to get stopped out here. Not yet though, about 10 cents away from getting stopped out. Let's see how the index is doing. Index is still looking weak to me. We'll see. Apple at wedge resistance here. Yeah, this is your Apple mm -hmm. supply zone right here. That's a lot of volume though. That's really a lot of volume that came on an Apple. Uh, I'm taking it simply as a trend against, you know, what I'm talking about here. So just put together what you learn in the Everyday Growth Advisors Mentorship course here. You know, the first thing that I always teach on these things is always remember that you're not, when you're trading a specific mm -hmm. stock, that specific stock is part of an index, okay? And let's say you see the SPY dropping here or Dow Jones dropping here, right? Um, and then you see the NASDAQ following suit, right? You'll see stocks like Apple eventually will have to fall along with it. Why? Because as the index comes down, it's pressured, it's pressured to come down, okay? Uh, so eventually, yeah, you'll see, yeah, temporarily you might see your, your, your contracts in negative, but then 
over time you'll see, okay, this is an, actually another better opportunity for me to actually scale in. So like right now, I'm gonna probably decide if I wanna scale in one more contract up here, right? Why? Because it's cheaper, right? If I can get it closer to $2, obviously I'll scale in more, right? But if I can't, then, you know, I'll just hold off, right? But I have one contract at $2.22 and the, and the contract's trading at two thirteen, so I'm not really making that big of a loss, like $10. $10 to $12 loss, right? We don't really care about that. But I just want to show you the principle of what you can learn here, okay? And if you guys have un uh, trouble understanding that, make sure you reach out to me because I can explain it. All right. You guys, you guys understand what I'm talking about, right? You see the indexes going red here, right? What what index is Apple part of? It's actually part of all three of them, right? So you 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 know that. Jeez, wow, a lot of flow here today. All bullish flow too. Interesting, very interesting. All the flow betting on bullish moves. More Apple calls coming in. 109 calls. So, there, okay, in that case, there is more institutional betting going on here. More than likely, people backing up their shares. Um, um, okay, most of us, we get stopped up for $20. Not that bad. It won't be a big deal. And NVIDIA, nope. CrowdStrike, nope. Not yet. This one's also not yet. Qcom looked like a rejection there. <gasps> Baba, damn. Gap down, possible bearish continuation here. Amazon with the bearish movement as well. How are you guys doing so far? Everybody's quiet all of a sudden. Everybody's looking at the screens, huh? Everybody's looking for opportunities, huh? Boeing. Boeing's potentially a good setup for a short here as well, by the way. As the Dow continues to press down here, Boeing on this break, if we get this break here, and then a retrace, go back up, retest, we enter here. Beyond, nah. Facebook bearish also took my profits on Apple only one contract eighty one dollars. You mean uh, Apple calls? You did you did you play Apple calls or Apple puts Apple calls? Huh? You played Apple calls, guaranteed. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, that's a good one. Congratulations. Uh, let's see here. Netflix. Microsoft calls coming in. Facebook here looking bearish, by the way. A break below 273. And we can take Facebook puts. We'll watch that one. Actually, we need we need the bounce and then we can take it to the downside. Activision. Ah, okay. Thanks for the info.
Apple slowing down here with the momentum. Buyers are exhausting here. Can you see the volume dropping? Hello, Nestor. How are you doing, man? What's up? Welcome into the stream. Make sure you guys smash the like button, guys. Okay, I see a little bit of buy up here. Let's see. NASDAQ, Dow Jones. Okay. Ooh, that was... Wow, that was a very bullish candle right there. Damn. Apple head and shoulders on which time frame? Head and shoulders. You mean like here? Reverse head and shoulders? Possible. You mean like head and shoulders? Maybe. Fastly. Fastly retracing. This is actually a bullish play here on Fastly. This is a good entry for Fastly mm -hmm. calls here, guys. This is a potential good entry on Fastly calls. The volume is there. This may be a good scalp opportunity here, guys. Fastly calls nice bounce on the old resistance here. Let's see here. Let, let's let's look. Uh, let's pay attention to this one closely. A possible good scalp opportunity here to the upside. There has been some volume until unless it drops further here, that would void this analysis. Facebook calls, silver, AMD, more calls. Lots of AMD calls came in. ATVI is all right. How's our ticker of the week doing? Ticker of the week is bearish, as we said earlier. It's approaching our entry, actually. Look at this room. This is really nice. RTX here, Raytheon. Uh, you know, in that supply zone, struggling pretty hard. KNG pulling back. Yeah, everything seems to be pulling back. Fastly voiding our analysis. We're dropping even further. Apple pulling back a little bit. Crowd strike. I guess Fastly not that good of a play then. <laughs> AMD 115 calls for January. That could be okay, but it's looking a little too far in strike price. That's what I would say. RNG. Man, that company never drops. I feel like it just keeps going up. RNG. Ring Central. Yeah, this one. Oh, man. ZS. Damn, did we miss it again? Man. Come on, Landon, you're supposed to keep me on track with ZS, dude. That's your only job. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh -huh. Dude, we always miss this one. It's uh, it's freaking annoying. It was a good setup, too. Damn. This was a great setup. How's Zoom doing? Zoom, wow. When completely zoomy, getting rejected here, looking like a um, 
this looks like a um, straight up symmetrical triangle right now. Which our way breaks. AMD going again. Yeah, AMD calls were a lot of them in today. It's much more fun if I can talk to you guys, to be honest. This way, I feel like I'm talking to myself. It's a lot less fun. RTX falling here. As we have been talking about, uh, break below 72.83. This would be a nice little entry here. It's about to go. If the Dow Jones falls somewhere, of course. Do you prefer plotting dual zones instead of support resistance? That is, would you draw a rectangle over slightly different peaks? Um, it depends. I use dual zones in together with um, support resistance. I don't use them standalone. Like for, and I only plot dual zones or I plot these kinds of zones on one hour charts. Do a Zoom chat. Okay, fine, we will. Let's do it. There's only 100 spots, so whoever gets it, gets in, gets in. I'll send you guys the link right now. There you go. Let's see how 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 many people fill up here. Twenty. Twenty one. What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Oh, why is this recording? Yo, Yo -ho -ho. What's up? What's up, EGA Tribe? What's so, up? How are you guys doing today? Missed the EGA sessions. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it's coming back. Don't worry. It's coming back. Just give it some patience. Give it some patience. All right. 28 of you so far. 29. Let's see. What's up? What's up? What's up, brother? Alright, 32 of you. Oops. 33. Oh, Apple got stopped out, I think. Oh, not yet. Surprisingly. Um, Still at eight bucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm nine bucks away from getting stopped out. Surprisingly, actually, I'm 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 actually gonna scale into Apple one more contract. Hold up, real quick. Let me see. Yeah, I'm, I channel. think I may I may consider scaling in one more contract into Apple here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna scale in one more contract to Apple. Two dollars and ten cents. This is Apple puts, 118 puts, okay. Uh, if anything, by the way, with this Apple trade, I intend to hold it for a day if it doesn't go our way. Okay. 
I'm gonna move my stop loss a little further down. So my stop loss is now gonna be. Oops. One ninety. I'm moving my stop loss to 190. And then we'll see how this plays out for intraday. Anyone here in any trace that they want to share? Square, what about square? That was one that has run up insanely as well. I'm in square 210, looking at TTD 900 calls. Oh, what about Shopify? Oh, this one, damn. Yeah, this one's insane. RTX fell here. NVAX. Roku is trying to break out on Roku. Roku. Oof. NVAX. Yeah, this is another one. Interesting. NVAX. This is a vaccine one, right? This is biotech. I like the price action, but I don't like the stock itself. That's the problem for me. You said Roku? Okay, I guess we'll continue the stream on the Zoom call. I'm gonna um, cut out the live stream on YouTube so that we can continue on the, the call on Zoom. It's just so much easier here and less laggy too. Um, and then I'll share my screen right here so you guys can see everything. Cool. Uh, guys, if you wanna join the live trading session, I posted the Zoom link. Uh, once again, put, it's right up here, so I'll repost it here. Um, click on the link, I'll let you into the Zoom chat. Uh, that way we can continue to call there. And then I'll see you guys, the rest of you guys who are on YouTube on Wednesday for Fundamental Wednesday. Thank you guys for joining us on this uh, session today. Once again, smash the like button on your way out, and I hope that you guys have a great day. Peace and good vibes to all of you guys. Make sure you click on the Zoom link if you want to join the live trading session. All right, see you guys then. Bye-bye.